Psalm chapter 33. Psalm. Psalm chapter 33. Psalm chapter 33 and verse number 12, please. Psalm 33, verse 12. I feel like uh, Brother Jorgensen said, uh, you know, you you kind of feel after you've been in the ministry a while, you know, you, you feel. People laugh at you for saying you're nervous, but you know if you, if you ever get up to preach and you're not nervous, there's probably something wrong. Because to get up and to proclaim this book, it's a great responsibility, and to have the privilege to do it to you, America's future, and the hope of our nation is a, is an honor to me. Psalm 33. We're going to read one verse, and I'm going to jump. Uh, Verses uh, 13 through 22 are great verses, and, and you can read those in your own uh, time. But I'm just going to start with 12 just to uh, to conserve time because i got a lot I want to say and a little bit of time to say it in. And, and uh, I'm going to go off like a buzz saw, all right, and, uh, and uh, preach, all right. So uh, just uh, hang with me. I'm going to lay a little bit of a foundation, and I want you to listen, and uh, I think... Uh, I hope I can be a blessing to you. Verse number 12, the Bible says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom He has chosen for His own inheritance. I'm going to pray, and then we'll start the message. I'll give you the title in just a moment. Heavenly Father, I pray that you bless the message. Lord, I I need your help. I never envisioned... When I was 17 and I sat in that youth conference and Lord, you spoke to my heart. And I was scared to death because I was wrapped up in rap music and worldliness and hypocrisy in my youth department. I never thought when I went to that altar and I said, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. I never thought for one moment that I would preach at a youth conference 10 years ago. I never thought that. But here I am, God, and it's all because of you. And Lord, I need you. Lord, I pray that you fill me with your spirit. Please, once again, touch me, use me. I pray you give us Holy Spirit listening. May our ears be open to the truth of your word. May we see the importance that we are to our nation if it's ever to see a revival. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I love America. I love the flag, the fathers, the freedom, and the fight of America. There's just something about it. I sat in my office on Sunday as uh, as uh, 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 time drew close to the service, and, and uh, some of our teenagers were practicing the song they sang last night, and they asked me on Sunday night, they said, Brother Davis, did you hop, did you yell on Sunday uh, uh, afternoon? Did you scream? Because we heard like a big loud scream. We were practicing our song. We heard somebody scream. Did you scream? I said, yes, I screamed. We were losing by one in the hockey final, and we scored with 24 seconds to go. Are you serious? Yeah, I screamed. But the fight of America, because you could never count us out. I love that about America. The Bible says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. At one point in time, when we were founded, that was America. But America has forgotten the godly foundation on which she was built. Because truth be told, in principle, in politics, America's God is no longer the Lord. Something's wrong, and the truth is the schools of America are filled with gangs and rape, and I went to public school, so I know this firsthand. Drugs, alcohol, pornography, homosexuality, and while these things are allowed and promoted, prayer is outlawed and the Bible is exiled. Something's wrong and, and television uh, uh, daily bombards our senses uh, with the idea that wrong is right, the abnormal is normal, the abhorrent is acceptable, the ungodly is funny, and that what God calls an abomination is nothing more than a different lifestyle. Forty-five years ago, the number one TV program was the Andy Griffith Show. You don't even want to see what's on there today. 
When contraceptives can be passed out, abortions can be performed, homosexuals get special treatment, yet the Bible, Christians, and God Himself are shunned and laughed at in society. I'm not talking about Russia. I'm not talking about communist China. I'm not talking about a third world country. I'm talking about the area that you live in and just because it's not happening in your little town doesn't mean it's not happening. Because it is. It's time that we let the world know that our parents just, our parents didn't raise dogs. They reared children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. They took us to church. They prayed with us. They taught us the Bible. They taught us that if the Bible says it's right, it's right. And if the Bible says it's wrong, it's wrong. The only hope America has is that if some godly teenagers decide and stand together in one mighty army and declare to the ungodly and immoral and unpure and obscene that your days of unlimited use and unlimited access to the minds of America are over. Our army has been silent too long. Our churches and our youth departments and our preachers and our youth pastors and our parents and our leaders and our teachers and our teenagers. It's time to take America back. That's what this conference is about. This isn't a feel-good, charismatic, carefree, careless, think about serving God when you're 50 kind of conference. This is an I'm young, I've got life, I've got energy, I've got potential, I've got a fire, and I want to use it for God. This isn't about joining NASA or the Army or the Marines or the Air Force or the Navy. This is about enlisting you in the most powerful and the most needed army in the world, and that's the army of the all-living God. I want America back. I want our country to come back to God. I want it to put Him first again and to live by the book. Don't you want America back? Don't you want the America that, it, that was founded on, on godly principles and on the principles of the Bible? Thank all 15 of you. I'll get to the, to the point in a minute about some of you, but the truth is some of you really don't care. You just don't care. You like the America you live in. But I don't. I'm sick and tired of America being held captive by the devil and by his tricks and by his demons and by and by the world and by the flesh. And I'm I'm going to cry aloud and spare not and say, Hey, I want it back. I want America back from the addicts, the adulterers, the alcoholics, the atheists, the the All-American Rejects, American Idol, the Academy Awards, the Abortionists, and the ACLU. I want America back from the Buddhists, the Bad Boys, the Beastie Boys, Beyonce, the Brats, Joe Biden, Barney, Black Eyed Peas, Budweiser, Black Eyes, Black Toes, Black Clothes, and Britney Spears. I want America back from child abusers, cop killers, carnal Christians, contemporary Christian music. 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 Corruptors of our minds. Casinos, cigarette companies, cell phones, country music, and two cool teenagers. I want America back from deadbeat dads, divorced deceivers, drunkards, the devil, Dr. Dre, and discord among the brethren. I want America back from Eastern religion, the Easter Bunny, Enchanters, ESPN, environmentalist wackos, easy believism, the easy life, emo, Elton John, Eminem, and earring wearing sissy boys. I want America back from false accusers, fakes, fornicators, familiar spirits, flag burners, false witnesses, forward women, Facebooks, fags, floozies, fools, and foolish flops who follow their filthy flesh. I want America back from gamblers, the gothic, green day, gangsters, godless, gangs, God, God smack, gun legislators, and God's supposed last name. 
Time out. I want America back from the heathen, the harlots, the heretics, the hypocrites, Hannah Montana, the haughty, the honky tonks, Harry Potter, Hollywood, the Hindus, Hugh Hefner, high school musical, homos and hellraisers. I want America back from the indiscreet, the irrational, the immoral, the immature, Islam, the IRS, and the Internet. I want America back from the jealous, the junkies, the jobless, Jay-Z, the juvenile delinquents, the jaywalkers, the Jonas Brothers, the Jehovah Witnesses, Joe Camel, and Jolly King Cole. I want America back from the Ku Klux Klan, the kidnappers, the King of, Queen, the King of Queens, the Kiss, King Kong, King Tut, King John, and Jerry the King Lawler. I want America back from losers, the lavish, the lazy, the lukewarm, ludicrous, long hair, lawless, liberals, Larry the Cable Guy, law lawyers, liars, lesbians, and lovers of this present world. I want America back from MTV, Madonna, Madden, Marilyn Manson, MySpace, money-grabbing preachers, murmurers, Metallica, Mothers who murder their children. The Masons and the Morons. Or the Mormons, however you say it. I want America back from nations that forget God. From New Agers, from non-denominationalists, from New Evangelicals, from Nickelback, from Naughty Hearts, and from Nitwits and Nitkampoops. I want America back from Oprah, from outlaws, from open marriages, from outraged drivers, from out-of-touch parents, 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 from overdoses, from outrageous outer opportunists, and bless God, from Obama. I want America back from potheads, from pornography, from the prom. I said from the prom. I said from the prom, Brother Davis. Brother Davis, it's March. I can't preach against the prom. I said the prom. I want America back from Playboy, politicians, PG-13, PG-14, PG-15, PG-16, PG-17. I want America back from penthouse, public schools, proud, premarital sex, pants on women, and pop music. I want America back from queers, quitters, quacks, and the questionable. I want America back from rebels, reprobates, rock and roll, R-rated movies, rap music, and rape. I want America back from sin and Satan and Southern Baptists. I want America back from Snoop Dogg and Satanism and sorcery and sodomy and scoffers and slanders and sickos. I want America back from thieves and traitors and tattoos and TV evangelists and Twitter and Twilight and Twilight and Twilight and Twilight and Twilight and Twilight. And Twilight. And youth workers. Twilight. And young ladies. Twilight. And some of you young sissified boys. Twilight. Bless God, it's one thing to read about blood-sucking vampires. It's another thing for a young man to read about love stories. Get you a book about war or something. Good night in the morning. I want America back from the unisex, from unbelievers, from unclean spirits, from the U.S. Supreme Court, the bad ones, uh, from the unclothed, the uncertain, the unfaithful, the ungodly, the unrighteous, and the unsaved. I want America back from vanity, vil villains, the vengeance, vice, violence, vampires, and vomit. I want America back from winos, weirdos, wackos, women who dress like men, the WWE. Womanizers. Whosoever lo loveth and maketh a lie, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life. I want America back from xenophobes, xenophiles, X Files, Generation X, X Men, and Malcolm X. I want America back from yellow bellied cowards, young and the restless, and Yankees. I want America back from ZZ Top, Zorro, and Zitz. 
Finally one y'all can understand. Now listen, the truth is, all those things I mentioned, and by the way, I named names in case you didn't pick that up in that big list. Those things are overtaking our country. They rule your mind, and that's why you knew what I was talking about. The truth is, I had to do research on a lot of that stuff. Some of it's changed in 10 years since I was engulfed in it. But you knew what I was talking about. You know why? Because that stuff has America, has America's youth. It has your mind and your heart. And I'm here to say I want America's youth back. I want America back. I want America back. If we are going to save this country, we've got to yell, we've got to scream, I want America back. But here's the thing. We don't need Prozac, we don't need Ridlin, we don't need Valium, we don't need more morphine, we don't need Rogaine. We don't need, we don't need Tums, Rolaids, Pepto-Bismol, or Alka-Seltzer. We don't need mouthwash, baking soda, dental floss, or peroxide. We don't need Clarion, Mary Kay, Revlon, Avon, or CoverGirl. We don't need bailed out, dug out, hung out, laid out, played out, set out, or set up. The answer is simple. Has to do with this book. Has to do with the God of this book, the Savior of this book, and the people of this book. And listen to me, most importantly today, the young people of this book. You are the hope in the future. If this conference doesn't get you fired up for God, America's well enough shot. The preaching you've heard this week. And you walk away and say, eh, I don't care. The answer for America is not Mr. Rogers, Ginger Rogers, Roy Rogers, Kenny Rogers, or Rogers and Hammerstein. It's not the Easter Bunny, the Thanksgiving Turkey, Santa Claus, St. Patrick, or Groundhog Day. The answer for America is not. Oprah Winfrey, Dr. Phil, Ellen, Jerry Springer, Larry King, or Jay Leno. It's not Mother Goose, Mother Teresa, Mother Hen, Uncle Sam, or Aunt Jemima. The answer for America is not the Catholic Pope, the Presbyterian Bishop, the Episcopalian Erector, the Jewish Rabbi, or the Charismatic Reverend. It's not the New York Times, the Sports Illustrated, Cosmo, or the TV Guide. It's not Gone with the Wind, E.T., Star Trek, or Transformers. It's not Ricky's Lake, Dawson's Creek, Snowy River, or the ocean where the Titanic sank. The uh, the answer for America is not in the mayor's office. It's not in the governor's mansion. It's not the White House or the outhouse. But the answer is somewhere. And I want to find it because I want America back. I'm tired of the queers and the fears, the rears and the beers running our country. Somewhere, somehow, someday, like Brother Jorgensen talked about, there ought to be a generation that rises up and said, I'm taking my country back. I believe this is us. I believe we are the answer. So, Brother Davis, how do we get our country back? Number one, old time. This isn't, this isn't what I'm talking about. So thank you for the food. Bless you for it by the amen. This isn't what I'm talking about. Yeah, I lay me down to sleep. Pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I stand far awake, pray, pray the Lord my soul to take. Amen. I'm about this. I'm talking about a burden. I'm talking about not sleeping. Not because you're watching TV. I'm talking about not eating. Not because you feel fat. But because you're fasting. Because you're so burdened. Just like Dr. Jorgensen preached, it doesn't start, you, you, you can't set your goals so far ahead, you've got to start with you. Oh, I know. 
Let's start a prayer group. We could have 50. I got a better idea. Let's start a prayer group. With one. And listen, instead of at church, in your closet. In your closet. Where you get on your face and you pour your heart out to God. Let me tell you why you have trouble reading your Bible and praying, but you don't have trouble coming to church or going so in or doing stuff where people see you. Because when you come to church or you go soul winning or you're somewhere where people see you, there's always someone to pat you on the back and say, great job, wonderful, you're awesome. But when you go into that prayer closet, it's you and God. And you fall on your face and you pray for those lost people that you know, your lost family members. Some of you have lost moms and lost dads and lost brothers and lost sisters and lost family members, lost, lost people on your bus route, lost people in your church, and you haven't even prayed for them. Why? Because when you pray, nobody says, Hey, woohoo! Way to pray. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. It's just you and God. You know why we don't, you know why we don't read the Bible? Because when we read the Bible, we finish reading and we turn around and it's just us. And nobody goes, Way to go! Three chapters a day! High five, man! No. It's just us and God. I'm talking about old time praying where it's a relationship, not a show. We have become the best actors in the world. We know how to tie ties. We know how to get haircuts. We know how to buy skirts. But we have no idea how to walk with God. Say, Brother Davis, are you mad at us? No, but I'm mad at the devil. And I want America back, and if we're going to get it back, it's going to take a relationship right. with God Almighty. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to take more than showing up and playing church. That's what we say in the mountains. Come on, preacher. It's going to take more than playing church. It's going to take walking with God, praying, and praying as me talking to Him, and reading as Him talking to me, and listening to the Holy Spirit is my me showing my obedience to what he's telling me. Are you understanding what I'm putting down? Old time praying. Oh, for a teenager 15 years old. That instead of making movies, they're Hollywood. We make prayers. They're Hollywood. Oh, for a college student that would say, man, when I've got some free time, rather than just laying around and sleeping a few extra hours, and I understand sleep is a valuable commodity in college. And sleep is a valuable commodity in high school. Sleep is a valuable commodity anytime. Can I say this? Prayer is an even more valuable. Hold for a teenager that would say, I've got 15 extra minutes. Rather than going in there and turning on the Wii and wasting those 15 minutes. I'm going to spend some time with God. Some of you all are relying so much on Mario to save America, you spend more time with him than you do God. I know this don't feel good. And let me tell you something. It's like that old time cough medicine granny used to give me. Listen, you take it, it'll help you. Old time praying. Number two, you want America back? i tell you how we get it back. Old time preaching. 
Not no lectures. Not no seminars or no conventions. Hey, here we believe in preaching. That's why we're fundamentalists. We preach. We're going to give you a little subject and a little, little, little talk or a little chat. We preach. We're preachers. I was called to preach the Word, Second Timothy. You with me? What we need, though, let me tell you something. One day I'm going to be where Brother, Brother Robertson and Brother Malone and Brother Howes and, 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 and Brother Norris are. I'm going to be in heaven. Where's America going to be then? We've got to have some old-time preaching still. This country needs some old-fashioned, leather-long, rock-rimmed, sin-hating, devil-fighting, barnstorming, window-rattling, shingle-pulling, pew-jumping, Bible-thumping, sin-hating, devil-fighting, rattling, shingling, pulling, pew-jumping, Bible-thumping, straight as an arrow, clear as glass, spirit-filled, heaven-sent, hell-hot preaching. That's what will get America back. Now, they won't always like it like some of you don't, but that's okay. We need some young men to stand up and say, I, hey, I want America back. And I'll preach to get it back. I'll give my life to get it back. We've got young men that give their lives, they sign their lives away to go and fight for our country. And I'm not at all diminishing that. My brother leaves. He's going to go. He's joining the Air Force, and he's going to go fight for our country. I'm not at all diminishing that. My friend, we need some men on the spiritual battlefield that will fight for our country. We need some old-fashioned preaching, some old-time preachers. Too many young men. We need some young men who so love their God and so love their country, they'll, they'll forsake all to serve Him to reach their country. Won't you just chuck that sin that's keeping you down and decide to pick up your Bible and surrender to preach? Huh? Hey, man, I was a rapper. I was a rapper. I had a four-year scholarship to the University of Kentucky. Paid everything. God said, I want you to preach. I said, okay, I'll preach, but first I'm going to go to college. You know, kind of like some of y'all are doing. He surrendered to preach a couple years ago and now now whispering and voices that said, oh no, hey, you need to go, you don't need to go to Bible college, you need to go somewhere else. Four-year scholarship to the UK, everything paid. God said, I want you to preach. I said, I will preach, God, as soon as I go to college and get a, get a good job, make some good money. And then I try to spiritualize it. Well, Lord, you know, I just don't want to take anything from the church. You know, if I have a job as an engineer, Lord, I, I, could, I could not take a salary. And everything would be okay. And I can preach on the weekend, like a hobby. You know what God said? I didn't call you for a hobby. And a man looked at me like I'm looking at you. Now, he wasn't preaching. We was eating lunch. He said, you ought to pray about Bible college. And he could have stuck an arrow right in my heart. And I was like, ugh, uh, I'm going. I called the, the people that gave me the scholarship. I said, I'm not coming to college. They said, do what? You realize we only offer this scholarship to so many people a year, and you're refusing it? Yes, ma'am. On what basis? I'm going to another college. Okay. So I came to Commonwealth Baptist College. And I worked 50 hours a week. And I paid my way through Bible college. But let me tell you something. God called me to preach. And I wanted America back. You want your country back? You willing to pray for it? Are you willing to, 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 to chuck this hypocrisy that we're living and really pray and walk with God about your country? 
Is there any young men or young ladies that are willing to say, I want to make it back so bad that day, I'm willing to give my life to get there. Number three, I'm finished. Old time participation. This is where I just real quick want to address some, some people who just really don't care. Yep. There's some of you who you just really don't care. You don't care whether America comes back or not because you kind of enjoy it. You enjoy those things we talked about earlier. You enjoy the fact that America has been overtaken by the, by the world and the flesh and the devil. Those things so have a hold on you that right now the devil's whispering in your ear, He's so mean. He hates you. You think I would let those guys slap me and hit me like that if I hated you? Huh? Listen, let me tell you something. I so love the young people of America. I want God to give us our country back. But I can want it till I'm blue in the face. Now listen, I can teach how to. I can teach how to all day. It's another mountain, Satan. You can't teach want to. I can't make you want to do right. I can't make you want to read your Bible. I can't make you want to walk with God. I can't make you want to surrender to God's will. I can't make you want to do right. I can't make you want to get America back. I can't make you want to do that. That takes surrender of your heart to God. And if you don't have that, if we don't get a, a majority that, are, that, are, that, are, that would care less about looking good and, and being cool and being prissy and proper... I'll finish with this story and I'm done. On December the 7th, 1941, Japan attacked Pearl Harbor. The next day, you could not count the number of teenagers that lined up outside the recruiting office to lie about their age so they could fight for their country. And the first winner of the Congressional Medal of Honor, Jack Lucas. He joined at 14. At age 17, he dived on two grenades that blew him 15 feet in the air. At 17! Why? Because he loved his country. See, America's at war, not with Iraq, China, or Afghanistan, but with the devil. And we need some young people. We need some young people who the most important thing in their life is not how much money or how many things, but it's selling out lock, stock, and barrel to God. Amen. And it's not, I'm not asking you to jump on grenades. I'm asking you to surrender to God's will. Amen. Bow our heads and close our eyes, please. Heavenly Father, please bless the remainder of the service, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen.